We, we're interested in empowering both current leaders and future leaders. Oftentimes we think about fixing problems in society, but what about uh, finding ways to keep certain problems from happening by investing more in our young people? Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's STEM, uh, helping them in their academics to perform better later instead of a pipeline to prison, a pipeline to college or whether it's uh, pu public service. There's a lot going on in our world today, uh, uh, in factions in our community between public service, police, and community. So we wanna help uh, young people to think about uh, a future in public service, but also to gain a new type of respect for public service, right? Because they need, they are our future leaders. So they would be the future police and the FBI uh, and hopefully president of the United States. But um, what about uh, helping them to gain appreciation and for the value that public service has in our community? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna have to ask you, yeah. what was the first day like? Because you're used to hanging around college kids that are yes. really thinking the future and, yes. and academ academics and thinking about the future and pastors that are into the whole. Now you got a six-year-old at Berkeley Southside Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, tell me about well, it. Well, it was very interesting yeah, because... Uh, you had the bow tie on? Uh, yeah, well, the first day I didn't, but I did <laughs> later on. I did later did on. Did you? And, uh, yeah, and they loved it. Uh, but um, when I explained to them what the camp was about, and I mentioned to them that we were going to have police officers and an FBI coming, well, it, wasn't, it, was, it was met with a lot of resistance because a lot mm -hmm. of the kids have seen things on television and heard things in the community. And so that helped me realize that the vision for this project was actually valuable because we were able to take kids who resisted the idea on the first day and by the end of the camp those same young boys and girls were talking about all the things they enjoyed and how they envisioned being a police officer and an FBI agent so that's what it was all about changing the mind and making an impression a positive impression on the minds of young people because they had the opportunity to learn about Yes, and walk in their shoes. it was an interactive camp. So enough of police brought uh, their K-9, they brought the bomb squad, <laughs> they brought robots. We took a trip over to... Oh, did they let you do the room? Uh, they brought the robots. They even, they even showed the young boys and girls how they uh, look. I forget the gadget's name, but they look through it and they can tell how fast somebody is going. So they had an opportunity to physically do that to cars going up and down the road. So that was just life-changing for these kids. And it was life-changing for me. When they brought the big guns and stuff, I said, you know, I'm, I hate to act like a kid, but I just... <laughs> <laughs> I want to hold that thing. <laughs> yeah, but it was something powerful that happened when happens when uh, the police, the FBI, the fire, uh, the fire and rescue, rescue, uh, fire and rescue uh, came and uh, invited the young boys and girls into the vehicles on the motorcycles and explained what they do and why they do what they do. It was something magical that happened. Prior to the class there are people who are saying it's can be hopeless right yes. i mean we're in this we're in this despair there's bizarre things happening nationwide yes um we're lucky that they haven't happened here but i think hearing your enthusiasm it's that kind of investment that has prevented prevented us from having some of the negatives but strengthening the community instead. Well, I think so, and I think we have to be proactive. We can't just wait till things happen in our community and be reactionary, although there's a place for that when things unfortunately happen. But how, it's, it, you know, I like to encourage people to be proactive and find ways to support the community ahead of time, find ways to build relationships and bridges with the units in the community so that we don't have internal factions and, mm -hmm. and problems and warfare, almost like civil war in our own community. So that's what we want to, we want to keep from happening. And we want, and, and we can seize the moment, as they say, and build the necessary, the necessary relationships between um, police, the FBI, we're fortunate we have them right here, and the faith community, the universities, uh, and all the units in the community so that we can find ways to strengthen our community rather than uh, find ways to be react reactionary when unfortunate things happen. Now, okay, so when you see the pictures of a successful summer camp, mm -hmm. you hear the success stories, mm -hmm. then it's easy to say, that was easy.
Yeah. Was it? No, it was not easy. Uh, now, the, what was what was exciting was that we were able to build a relationship with the city of Norfolk and the police department, the FBI's fire and rescue, even uh, Virginia Beach uh, Police Foundation uh, partnered with us, and we took the kids out to uh, the police barn down in Fort, um, Virginia Beach. But 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 the, the challenge was number one, selling the idea, right? Uh, we have not come to understanding that little things matter. And oftentimes we're busy looking for measurable outcomes, but, and that's important, it has its place, but everything is not scientific, some things are cultural. And in order to engender the type of community that we need, it's, it can't only be accomplished by scientific measures. It had to be has to be accomplished through artistic ways. And by that I mean creating a culture Mm -hmm. of, of partnerships and whenever you want to create culture of partnerships when you have not had these type of partnerships in the past it's met with some sort of uh, cynicism in the beginning and I think a lot of things I had to do on my own because I couldn't get the people who I needed to help me to help because they didn't quite see the vision but so I you walk through the door and where are they? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had to be my own volunteer sometimes. Uh, <laughs> and we end up with 165 kids. Thankfully, uh, Mr. Greg and the folks at uh, Southside Boys and Girls Club were very supportive and they really saw the vision because they deal with the kids all the time. They know what they think. They know what the community is like. So they saw the need and uh, we were able to build the type of resources, our, our relationships to bring the resources to the Boys and Girls Club to start creating that culture that I believe. Now, and as you said, now one time is not the be all, right? Mm -hmm. You can't have one thing and say we did it and say, uh, you know, now we're having, we won't have any problems. The a culture has to be repeated, right? To create habits and to create a culture, it has to be repeated. It has to take fire more than I need to be doing this, this type of work. And these things are happening in our community with other uh, units in the community as well. But I want to encourage folks, the watchers, to, to find ways to build these type of relationships in the community. Let it catch fire. Faith community all over. Um, the schools, everybody. Get joined forces to really help our young people because that's really where we need to put a lot of our attention. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that if you lined up every strategic plan that was made for a community mm -hmm. or for an issue, there's going to be involved the faith-based community. Yes. And you can line those up for the last 20 years. Yes. Let's talk Charleston. Yes. Is that one of the triggers that kind of said, wait a minute, we got a safe place in the faith community, but maybe it's not as safe as we thought. Yes, uh, I think no. Charleston is a is a unique situation. I hope that it's an, it's a total anomaly right. uh, in many ways, uh, but it only shows us that um, the church or the faith community at large uh, has a valuable role to play in the community. Uh, but also it's a vulnerable place just as other places are vulnerable. And so in such a case, we need to work with our law enforcement to create safer spaces for all of our uh, spaces in the community, uh, faith-based and others alike, um, which is one reason why we need the police, right? On right. the one hand, we want to we critique uh, many things that's happening in terms of police in, in our society. But on the other hand, we really need a functional police and uh, law enforcement because we, evil does exist and we need the support uh, from the uh, law enforcement to, to help to uh, ward off as much as the uh, tragedy as we can. Now, University of Virginia did research and they came up with the idea that the chief mechanism for transformation in the, in the, in the urban community is really the faith community. Right? The faith community has a valuable role to play in community betterment. And uh, it's okay to say that now. It's okay to say that, and it, but it's even more important that the faith community understand its role in the community and that it doesn't just exist for itself. Right, but there we can build these type of relationships. We see in Ferguson, right? The faith community really has uh, wrote after the the killing of Mike Brown, the protesters. The faith community was sort of leading in uh, a lot of the calming of the community and trying to speak on behalf of the community. I think that faith community has an opportunity to speak proactively right, uh, before something happens, to speak on behalf of those who cannot speak for mm -hmm. themselves, if you will, or to, be a, or to find ways to bridge build, to, to do outreach, community outreach, and to participate in uh, clothes give, giveaways and help for the homeless and things like that. Uh, the faith community has a unique opportunity to lead in that way.
And there's a willingness? I think that there's a growing willingness. I lead two groups. Uh, mm -hmm. One is senior pastors in Norfolk who come together once a month with the city manager to talk about um, ways that we can bridge build and uh, to help uh, in education and economics and um, race relations and, and et cetera. Uh, so is this the pastors talking to the city manager? Yes. But it's also pastors talking to pastors, isn't it? That's right. That's right. It's not just pastors talking to city managers. It's pastors who are sitting around a table who may not have even sat together before in the history of their ministry. Because when we talk America. about faith community, yeah. it's not one big umbrella, is it? It's not one big umbrella. And many times because of, uh, you know, certain theological ideals or certain ways of or just being busy as pastors in their own parish or own church, they don't get out much, many times, not all the time, but sometimes you can really get consumed with what you're doing. And so this is an opportunity for us to build community among the faith community, even with people who we don't agree with. That's fine. Let's find common ground, right? Um, that's what Howard Thurman said. Um, search for the common ground. And that common ground is love and peace for all humanity. And we can work there and advance our mission there to help people. And, uh, and then the second group is an interfaith group, right? Muslims and Jews and Christians and of all ilks uh, and, you know, reformed and conservative and orthodox and, you know, uh, Presbyterian and Baptist and Pentecostals, all in the all same in one group, room, all in one room. This is uh, this is quintessential. Right. Mm -hmm. Community leadership where we come together and say, listen, we live in the greatest military uh, base in the in the world. Right. And uh, so with all the opportunities that we have here related to that fact, it also is um, vulnerable grounds for a variety of types of factions to come on our territory as well. So what we end up doing is we say, how can we come together to fortify leadership in the community that is for the betterment of humanity, of no matter who you are and where you come from and what your religious background is. Okay, I got 10 seconds, I'm gonna give you a challenge. What's that? Well, number one, 10 seconds. <laughs> Bring it home to the viewer. Bef after they turn this show off, what's the first thing you should do? I think the first thing they should do is encourage their church to participate in our conversation to work together. Yeah, and, and the viewer should also spend time volunteering, right? We got opportunities that are coming to the city that we're working through our group that is going to uh, create opportunities for the listener right now, your viewers, to participate in volunteering to help with economic empowerment, uh, uh, financial literacy, uh, helping the homeless. We can't do it. Right. The leader has to lead somebody. So we need people to volunteer to participate in the in the efforts that we're putting together in the summer camps, working with the kids, working with leaders and working with the uh, with the citizens of our community. Something tells me you only have one time where you walk in the door and you're the only one there. After that, there's a crowd. Well, Antipas, thanks for your well, commitment. Thank you. To really building for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Can't Appreciate do it without it. people like you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us.